The Summer Palace in Beijing that was built in the 18th century is such a captivating topic. I'm fascinated by what the palace was like, what happened to it, and what happened to the Emperor's art collection that was contained in it. I've done a lot of research into the Summer Palace and its art treasures, and it was while immersed in this world that I became interested in the fate of Thomas William Bowlby, a journalist who died in 1860 during the final stages of the European invasion of North China. It was this invasion that led to the destruction of the palace. His story resonates as a personal tragedy overshadowed by great international drama, the looting of a world-renowned art collection, the burning of a great palace by the Europeans, and the shift in relations between China and the West. In a sense, you might say that the interrelationship between China and the other world powers has never been quite the same since the events of 1860. Long before Vietnam or Bosnia or World War II, Thomas Bowlby was a pioneering reporter on the scene in the field of conflict. He put himself in harm's way and like some other journalists past and present, Bernard Fall comes to mind in the 1950s in Vietnam, he was a collateral victim of the conflict which he sought to understand and communicate. Bowlby was the special correspondence for the Times newspaper in China, accompanying the British Army during the final phase of the Second Opium War. He was captured during peace negotiations and died in captivity in September 1860. Here I hope to offer some answers to an enduring mystery, the location of his last resting place in China. First, a little background. Thomas William Bowlby was an Englishman who hailed from Newcastle in the northeast of England. He was born in 1818 in the British colony of Gibraltar, the son of Thomas Bowlby, a captain in the Royal Artillery. After serving in the army, his father retired to Sunderland, where he started a timber merchant business. Bowlby was educated in the northeast and then went on to become a lawyer, first in Newcastle and later in London. Because of a series of imprudent investments, Bowlby was forced to get involved in journalism, and it was as a journalist that he joined the Anglo-French army that invaded China in the summer of 1860. Over the course of a series of hard-fought small battles, the Europeans managed to establish a bridgehead on the Chinese mainland and then advanced stage by stage towards Beijing. As the army advanced, a dialogue was established between the Europeans and the Chinese to end the conflict. It was in the process of these negotiations that a team of negotiators, which included Bowlby, were captured and imprisoned. It was a pivotal moment in the life of the captives and in the prosecution of the campaign for it effectively stalled all peace negotiations for weeks and the Allies continued their advance to Beijing and the Summer Palace. The group that included Bowlby was taken to the Summer Palace itself and imprisoned under brutal conditions. During his confinement, Bowlby and the other prisoners were largely unfed and without water, beaten and tied up in such a manner that their circulation was cut off. Bowlby and a number of British soldiers died within a week of this treatment and a few survived. Apparently Bowlby died after just two days in captivity. The secretary to Lord Elgin, the diplomatic leader of the expedition to China, noted in a letter to Bowlby's brother the following. The Chinese authorities are sending to us five coffins which they informed us contained the bodies of those of our prisoners who had died while in imprisonment. 
When these were opened, one of them proved to contain, I grieve heartily to say, the remains of your poor brother, who we have since learned expired on the day after his capture. Most truly do I and his friends, who are numerous in this army, sorrow for his untimely end, and deeply do we sympathise with his bereaved family, to whom his loss must be a cruel and unexpected blow. During his stay amongst us, he made many friends and no enemies, and was a heartily welcomed guest wherever he went. I saw a good deal of him, and I shall not easily forget his kindness and attention to me when confined to my bed by the wound I received at the storming of the Taku forts. Many individuals, soldiers and others, killed during time of war, including in this war, are buried in unmarked graves, their memory lost. So perhaps it's rather unusual we know exactly how Mr. Bowlby died, we know where he was buried, and we know when he was buried. We even have a photograph of the grave shortly after the burial. This should theoretically be the end of the story. The grave was in a recognised ecclesiastical cemetery. It should be a simple matter to determine the last resting place of Bowlby and the others buried in the Russian cemetery outside the walls of Beijing. But nothing could be further from the truth. According to the official story, Thomas Bowlby, along with hundreds of others, is buried here. Qing Nian Hu Park lies in the northern suburbs of Beijing. More specifically, the site of his grave is said to lie under this driving range, which is in the northern portion of the park. It is an ignominious resting place, but there is quite a lot of evidence to support this location told that the site of his burial, the Russian cemetery, was redeveloped in the 1960s as a park. There are numerous articles on the internet that tell the same basic story. For example, Jeremiah Jenny, in a 2018 article entitled Skeletons in the Golf Course, tells us, Ching Nan Hu Park, the name literally means Youth Lake, was built in the late 1950s by members of the Communist Youth League, just north of the recently demolished city wall of Beijing. The cemetery belonged to the Russian Ecclesiastical Mission. Its oldest foreign graves are of the Albazanians, descendants of Russian Cossacks captured by Qing forces in the 17th century, who then resettled as part of the Yellow Banner Manchus in northern Beijing. I went back to maps from the early 20th century. Surely they could pinpoint the site of the Russian cemetery. Sure enough, on two Chinese maps from the 1900s, the Russian cemetery is identified. In both cases, a trapezoid footprint of very similar size and location basically coincidental with the Qing Nianhu Park. Thanks to Liu Huining for translating these and other Chinese map descriptions. It seemed at this point that the golf course theory is correct after all. One account on the internet notes decisively, today what was once a graveyard has become a golf course. Somewhere beyond the 100 meter post on the driving range under the stray golf balls left there by the, the drives, slices, putts and chips of weekend duffers are the remains of Russian royalty, the victims of torture, Christian missionaries and the graves of hundreds more whose stories we may never know. This would appear to close the case. The problem with the Qing Nian Hu Park location is the discrepancy between it and the eyewitness accounts of those who buried the journalist in 1860. The cemetery is about a quarter of a mile outside the northern wall of the city. The grave is on high ground just within the inner gate. The coffins were laid side by side from north to south, Private Phipps, then Lieutenant Anderson, 
then Mr. De Norman, then Mr. Bowlby. The Royal Engineers are to place a tomb over the poor fellows, and if the British government does not erect a monument to their memory, it is hoped that it will be done by private subscription. Robert McGee, the British chaplain at the funeral service, noted in his account of the war, the Russian burial ground is outside the north wall of the city, about a quarter of a mile from it, and on the, the verge of that large grey ground, it is, wa it is walled and planted, and an old Chinaman lives there and takes care of it. Robert Swinhoe, a diplomat and translator, recorded in his account of the events, The Russian cemetery is outside the city, to the right of the Anting Gate, situated about a quarter of a mile off the northern wall. It is a small space of ground enclosed by a wall, with a gate on the side facing north. Within this wall is another and smaller piece of ground enclosed by another square wall. There are, rather remarkably, photographs taken shortly after the interment, internment of not only the graves but also of the Russian cemetery itself. These were shot by an early Russian photographer in China who happened to be the Russian minister, Count Ignatiev, described earlier, who can be seen leaning over the grave monument in the first image. The date of these pictures is almost certainly 1860. Note Ignatiev left China in 1864, so these photographs could not have been taken later than 1864. From all of these eyewitness records, we can draw some quite definite conclusions. Firstly, it is clear that the burial site was in the old Russian cemetery, begun in the seven, late 17th century for Russians resident in Beijing. Secondly, the cemetery was a small walled affair with a gatehouse on high ground north of the city wall as it then was. Thirdly, the cemetery was, it was agreed, about a quarter of a mile from the Ming Wall. Bear in mind that before cars and mobile phones and satellite navigation, soldiers and officials were very used to estimating distances and were not likely to confuse a quarter mile, which is 440 yards, with a half mile, which is 880 yards. It doesn't sound like a big difference to us today, but when you walk the distance on foot, the difference is clear. And these and three observers that we just we just mentioned were unanimous in their accounts. I believe that there is a very high probability that these observers were accurate in their estimates of how far the cemetery was from the city wall. The eyewitness estimates of where the cemetery was located are confirmed by a 19th century sketch drawn by a Russian connected with the mission in Beijing, showing the Ming Wall and the location of the Russian cemetery, item seven, according to the key. Although approximate, you can see that their view was that the site of the cemetery was close to the wall, not half a mile distant. Compare the grave locations as described to the location of the Qing Nian Hu Park and the golf course as seen on a modern map and in its relation to the line of the, of the city wall. Although the city wall is gone, the line of the wall is still apparent from the modern map. It is very clear that the park does not correspond to the original descriptions. One account of the origins of the Russian cemetery states, during the Boxer Rebellion of 1900, another conflict between Westerners and China in and around Beijing, all the mission's churches and buildings, including its great library, were destroyed or burned, and 222 people who were seeking sanctuary inside the mission were killed. Afonina, in an article about the Russian cemetery, writes, a large contingent of Russian prisoners captured by the boxers were lodged near the Temple of the Earth, Ditan, 
where on the 11th of June 1900 in the morning they were executed en masse. The victims were buried by the boxers, she says, beyond the gates of Andingmen, where the country road branches off, were buried the remains of the Christians whom they had tortured. And goes on to say, in the middle of 1901, the Chinese government, by way of compensation for the destruction of the Russian mission buildings, granted the Russians the right to build a wall around the burial site without having to redress owners of the land. On this site was instituted a new Russian Orthodox cemetery where between 1903 and 1906 a church dedicated to Saint Seraphim was built. There appears to have been some confusion. This probably arose because the Russian cemetery established in 1901 was quite large, out of necessity, and became known as the Russian cemetery in the public imagination in the 20th century. The old Russian cemetery, which had been started in 1685, appears to have been largely forgotten. This all begins to make more sense when one understands the history and development of the Russian cemeteries in and around Beijing and the fact that there was in fact two Russian cemeteries, one which is now in the Qingnanhu location and another one which is the old Russian cemetery which we do not know the location. So if Bowlby and the others were not buried in the new Russian cemetery, then where were they buried? The, asked, the answer to this question is the original old Russian cemetery site established in 1685. We understand that it was probably quite small and I believe that it was not used after the establishment of the new Russian cemetery in 1901. Perhaps the old cemetery fell into disrepair and was no longer cared for after the new cemetery was established. If we go back to the historic photographs of the old cemetery shot in 1860, perhaps we can find some clues as to where it was located. We know from the original accounts that the, the old Russian cemetery was located to the right of the Anting Gate about a half a mile from the city wall on a little hill. When they say to the right, that means from the outside, from an outsider's perspective, if you are facing the wall and looking at the gate, the, the, um, the cemetery was to the right-hand side of that gate. On a pleasant day in October 2017, I set out to investigate for myself on foot in Beijing. The first road you come to as you head north from the Anding Men and get past the Ring Road is much too close to the line of, the, of where the original city wall was. So I marched on to the next cross street which is called Ander Street. If you turn left there and make the first or second right there are just tall apartment buildings built in the 1970s or 80s maybe on flat ground. So I retraced my steps and came to the third street on the right. There amongst the Shanlong Sili apartment buildings there are parking lots around the buildings. But high up above the car parks is a little hill above the level of all the buildings. It is slightly steep a little hill with an open space on top where you can see poplar trees growing. On the top of the little hill there is simply an enclosed plot with a tall spiked iron railing fence around it and a, and a flat plot of land in the middle. The land is not being used as a park or for parking and it hasn't been built on. There are no children's swings although it is a very pleasant space and you cannot enter. 
Along the north side of, of this private space, there is a wall. The little green space is between Si Ying Fang Hu Tong in the west and Shanlong Si Li in the east. This is south of the Qing Nian Hu Park, which is several hundred yards to the north. Here is my image of the little hill. I want you to take notice of the topography. Please notice the size of the hill. It is a little bit steep and the top is flat. It is the only hill like this around this area. The rest of the terrain between here and the line of the old city wall is basically flat. The buildings have all changed, obviously over the last 150 years, but the topography probably has not changed that much over this time. This is a short clip I recorded in 2017 while on location. There is an entrance gate on the north wall and possibly on the left hand side of the picture against the north wall is where the graves were, possibly. I wanted to circle back to early maps of Beijing to see if I could identify the old Russian cemetery site before it was destroyed and cross-reference that location to the position of the little hill. The very detailed and very accurate Qianlong map of 1750 does not extend beyond the line of north of the Ming Wall, unfortunately. Generally, the 19th century maps do not show the cemetery location as they are all limited to areas within the city wall. I have been able to identify two 19th century maps that confirm the general location of the old Russian cemetery, which is clearly south of where the new Russian cemetery was built and where the Qingnian Hu Park is now located. Of note on the Russian sketch map is the shape of the old cemetery enclosure. It is drawn as a right angled structure and since this map was designed purely to locate the Russian religious and mission buildings and is not a general map of the area, one has to assume that there was some intent in drawing the cemetery this way and this had some connection to the footprint of the cemetery. At any rate, it's all we have to go on in terms of an historic aerial view. If one scribes a line a quarter mile north of the Ming Wall on maps from the first half of the 20th century, the 1921 and 1950 maps don't show a tremendous number of buildings. We can accurately gauge the quarter mile distance because we know the width of the walled enclosure of the Forbidden City is precisely 2,470 feet or 823 yards. Right at the quarter mile point on these maps, at, approx at the approximate distance from the, the street extending north from Anding, Anding Men Gate, and incidentally also in the same spot as the little hill that I located are the Chinese characters which mean little camp. I have no idea what the map maker had in mind by little camp but it is tempting to infer that this was their name for the old Russian cemetery. Perhaps little was a reference to the smaller of the two Russian cemeteries. This may or may not be correct but the characters are in the exact spot of the little hill which I found in 2017.
If one looks at the 1907 map, which is much more detailed and seems to have been prepared more carefully, there are no written identifiers in this area, no little camp. The Andur Road is clearly marked, although in 1907 it was probably unpaved, but, but this is it. Just north of the Andur Road, a quarter mile from the Ming Wall, and maybe a quarter mile west of the road that runs north of the Anding Men, in the exact location of the Little Hill, is a cluster of buildings. One or all of these, I believe, must be the old Russian cemetery, and one of the buildings shown in this cluster is a right-angled shape matching that on the 19th century Russian sketch map. In summary, the evidence I would present regarding the location of the old Russian cemetery and the Bolby grave site are as follows. One, the topography of the little hill amongst the apartment buildings north of the Andur Road fits with the written descriptions of topography of the Russian cemetery site as recorded in 1860. Two, we know from the written accounts from 1860 and the 19th century Russian sketch map of religious sites in Beijing that the old Russian cemetery was a quarter of a mile north of the city wall and about a quarter of a mile west of Andingmen. The Little Hill fits with that description. Three, the appearance of the Little Hill fits with the look of the outside of the cemetery as it was photographed in 1860. 4. The location of the Little Hill matches early 20th century maps which show structures that match the description of the Russian cemetery enclosure at this spot. 5. The fact that the area on top of the Little Hill has been preserved, protected and it is well fenced is consistent with the idea that there may be graves in this location. 6. The wall on the north side of the current site is, is clearly old and uses a type of tiling that is traditional and consistent with the photographs of the Russian cemetery in 1860. 7. The lack of potential credible alternative sites in an otherwise flat plain of land north of the, the line of the old Ming wall. Therefore, I believe on the basis of this evidence that the Little Hill probably is the site of the Old Russian Cemetery. And I think we may well have found the last resting place of Thomas William Bowlby after all these years. <laughs>